The Tasmanian tiger is to Australia what Bigfoot is to North America, a creature that has often been sighted but never actually corralled by deluded amateurs. The difference, of course, is that Bigfoot is entirely mythical, while the Tasmanian tiger was a real marsupial that only went extinct about a hundred years ago. Tasmanian tigers appeared in Australia about 4 million years ago and were once widespread across the continent. Thylacines had short ears and legs and long, rigid tails, and they were about the size of an American coyote, standing approximately 24 inches 60 centimeters tall and weighing 37 to 44 pounds 17 to 20 kilograms. The Tasmanian tiger earned its name because of the distinctive tiger-like stripes along its lower back and tail, which were more reminiscent of a hyena than a big cat. Though this tiger was a marsupial, complete with a characteristic marsupial pouch in which the females gestated their young and thus was more closely related to wombats, koala bears and kangaroos. Another common nickname, the Tasmanian wolf, is a bit more relevant given this animal's resemblance to a large dog. If Tasmanian tiger is a deceptive name, where does that leave us? Well, the genus and species name of this extinct predator is Thylacinus cynocephalus, literally Greek for dog-headed pouched mammal, but naturalists and paleontologists more commonly refer to it as the thylacine. If that word sounds vaguely familiar, it's because it contains one of the roots of thylacolio, the marsupial lion, a saber-toothed tiger-like predator that vanished from Australia about 40,000 years ago. About 2,000 years ago, yielding to pressure from indigenous human settlers, Australia's thylacine population dwindled rapidly. The last holdouts of the breed persisted on the island of Tasmania off the Australian coast until the late 19th century, when the Tasmanian government put a bounty on Tasmanian tigers because of their predilection for eating sheep, the lifeblood of the local economy. The last Tasmanian tiger died in captivity in 1936, but it may yet be possible to de-extinct the breed by recovering some fragments of its DNA. In most marsupial species, only the females possess pouches, which they use to incubate and protect their prematurely born young, as opposed to placental mammals, which produce their fetus in an internal womb. Oddly enough, Tasmanian tiger males also had pouches, which covered their testicles when circumstances demanded, presumably when it was bitterly cold outside or when they were fighting with other Tasmanian tiger males for the right to mate with females. Although Tasmanian tigers looked like dogs, they didn't walk around like modern canines and they certainly didn't lend themselves to domestication. When startled, thylacines briefly and nervously hopped on their two hind legs, and eyewitnesses attest that they moved stiffly and clumsily at high speeds, unlike wolves or big cats. Animals occupying similar ecological niches tend to evolve the same general features. Witness the similarity between ancient long-necked sauropod dinosaurs and modern long-necked giraffes. Even though it wasn't technically a canine, the role that the Tasmanian tiger played in Australia was wild dog, to the extent that even today researchers often have a hard time distinguishing dog skulls from thylacine skulls. Until recently, paleontologists speculated that the Tasmanian tiger was a pack animal capable of hunting cooperatively to bring down much larger prey, such as for instance giant wombat, which weighed over 2 tons. However, a recent study has demonstrated that the thylacine possessed comparatively weak jaws compared to other predators and would have been incapable of tackling anything bigger than the small wallabies. There were a bewildering variety of ancestral marsupials in Australia during the Pleistocene epoch, so it can be a challenge to sort out the evolutionary relationship of any given genus or species. It was once thought that the Tasmanian tiger was closely related to the still extant Tasmanian devil, but now the evidence points to closer kinship with the numbat, or banded anteater, a small and much less exotic beast. So, can an extinct species be brought back to life? Scientists are taking a giant leap in that direction by using gene editing to resurrect the Tasmanian tiger. Researchers with the project, a collaboration between the University of Melbourne and the genetic engineering company Colossal Bioscience in Dallas, suggest that this so-called de-extinction could reinstall Tasmanian tigers to the wild within a decade and could help restore balance to Australian ecosystems. 
However, such efforts also raise questions about prioritizing high-tech solutions for resurrecting charismatic animals that humans have already exterminated, while hundreds of species teeter on the brink of extinction today. Scientists at the University of Melbourne have already sequenced the thylacine genome from preserved DNA and pinpointed which living marsupials are most genetically similar to thylacines. Colossal CRISPR gene editing technology will enable the group to take cells from a closely related living marsupial species, the fat-tailed donut, create a template genome, and then edit it to produce a thylacine genome and grow viable thylacine embryos.